brighten your day by watching the Time with Teresa television show. Whether in the studio or on location, Teresa Westbrook and guests will warm your heart and encourage your soul. And now, your host, Teresa Westbrook. Hello and welcome to the program. Tonight, we are on location at the Global Media Summit to celebrate the screening of First Lady. Earlier today, I was very privileged and honored to do sit-down interviews with Nancy Stafford and Nina May, who is the writer and director of this film, Nancy Stafford, who starred in the film, and Benjamin Dane. It was such a delight and such an honor. So tune in for those interviews. And then tonight, we're celebrating on the red carpet, and we're getting some of the audience's reactions after seeing the film. And I myself got to see the film, and I want you to know I thoroughly enjoyed it. So come along with us as we journey and celebrate this great night. God bless. A woman I once knew, she's quite the character. What hasn't been done, she will do. What has been done, she will do better. What kind of president doesn't have a first lady? Splendid American. She's an ex-first lady, that's all. She doesn't get a do-over just because her husband died. Looks like you have a second chance. You should take it. Oh, I am so sorry. You look lost. May I help you? She is regal. I think it is safe to say that I don't saw that coming. Ugh. Well, what an honor to have Nancy Stafford on set with us today. Nancy is best known for her starring role in Matlock. And it's so great to have her here today. She speaks around the world and she has come by to spend a little time with us today. Welcome, so Thank Nancy. Thank you, Teresa. So good to see you. Oh, Thanks it is a me. delight to meet you. I can't wait to get to know you more and we really appreciate you being here. Oh, my so. thrill. I'm delighted to be here. Well, how excited are you about the release of First Lady? I am over the moon about it. I mean, how often does a woman of age get to play Flotus? <laughs> get to be the first lady of the United States. So I love the story and I am just thrilled and honored. It's a funny, upbeat, lighthearted, romantic comedy kind of set without being political. It's set in the boundaries of politics and royal charm. And it's, uh, I think the, the audience is going to really love it. So I'm thrilled and excited to see it. I've not seen it yet. So oh, yeah. I'll see it along with everyone else at the screening today. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing it myself, but without giving anything away, uh -huh. please tell us a little bit about the character you play in the film. I am Catherine Morales, a former first lady who is no longer in that position, but our vice president who was in office when my husband was president, is now on a bid for presidency. And he asked me to run with him as first lady, as a non-spousal first lady. <laughs> and um, the, the reason is because we're trying to keep a very obnoxious um, couple who would just be the absolutely ditzy and horrible from ruining the dignity of the office. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really a, a it's a clash of a lot of things. It's funny, but it's a clash of, of boomers and millennials. It's a clash oh. of personal agenda versus principle. And um, it's, it's just very funny. And it's also uh, someone from my past kind of re-emerges re again. And the story is really about can two people who fell in love as teenagers but are separated then by life circumstances and distance and time be reunited and find true love. And we do. Oh, awesome. I'm <laughs> looking forward to seeing it so much. Well, what was the greatest challenge you faced playing your character? Um, I think first uh, finding, she's, she. I love Catherine Morales. Nina May wrote a beautiful character for me. She's a woman steeped in history. I'm a history professor. So history protocol, um, all of that, proper um, understanding and reverence for our nation's history and the office is steeped in her, very deep. So keeping that in mind, so whenever I would normally kind of go into my Nancy kind of 
funny stuff. I, I had to really keep her extremely grounded and very mature. I love her passion. I love her principles. Um, I was in almost every scene. So the, one of the hardest things was really um, being ready ahead of time because schedules change. And oh, some yeah. people, I've worked with actors who learned that day's work the night before and not everything. But I've also known after 30 plus years in the industry that schedules change. So mm -hmm. I had to know all the scenes really before the show ever started. Wow. So wow. It, was a, it was a lot of work, but I love that. I'd much prefer to be on a set where you're in almost every scene. You're working like crazy. You're challenged. Everybody's uh, amped up and you've got a tremendous amount of energy mm -hmm. than to wait around for hours and hours and hours. Right. And that's the other difference and that I appreciate about doing smaller independent guerrilla kind of filmmaking, mm -hmm. which is what so much of the smaller independent films are, and mm -hmm. faith films too, as opposed to big studio uh, schedules that mm -hmm. have, you know, hours and hours and hours. Maybe you shoot one scene a day at a studio oh. picture. Mm -hmm. But we shot this movie, I think, in about 12 days. And I mean, it's yeah, that's remarkable. It's a lot, <laughs> uh, and, and like you said, everyone chips in. Yes, you know, it was so and fun. Uh, you didn't. You weren't a diva. You were willing to help them, right? <laughs> we're all moving things. Don't tell the union, but we were moving cables and you know, lights. Now and, they might see this show. Are who we cares? good? <laughs> it's okay. We're good. We're, we've done it now. You can't shut us down. <laughs> well, tell me, what was it like playing with veteran actor Corbin Burnson? Great fun. Oh my gosh. He is a real pro and he brought so much to this character. And when you play with someone who has that kind of history and has done it for so long, it's like a wonderful tennis match where you just throw things back and forth to each other and it just sort of takes it to the next level. And I loved him. I loved what he brought. And uh, everybody though, everyone from the most seasoned veteran like Corbin to the, the first time on a set having an opportunity that Nina May gave some brand new actors to work. Um, I love the gamut and I love how everyone brought their best game and it just made it really fun. Oh, that's wonderful. And I love to hear that y'all were willing to kind of mentor and how exciting for those first time actors, you know, how exciting. That well, is so that's great. That's part of the joy of what we get to do. It's not just about us getting to work. It's about what we can deposit into the next generation mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. and help other people. You know? That's right. So we've been blessed. So we have to now reach out a hand to help other people. Well, now I know that you're um, Miss Florida. You have some modeling act as well as the acting career, but you're also an author. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about some of these books that you've written. Oh, gosh. I, that's maybe my great love. Speaking and writing are probably my favorite. Um, I wasn't going to be writing books, but um, I was contacted by a publisher who said, you're already talking to women, you're going all over the country talking to women about who they are, their identity in Christ, their value, their worth. Um, I think you need to write a book. Now I come, my first career was journalism. I, I came from, I was a journalism graduate from the University of Florida and that was my first career. But I hadn't done it in years. So I said, no, you know, we don't need another book. There's a million books out there. Everybody's writing a book. <laughs> he wore me down finally after about six months. He just said, finally, he said, okay, you, how many people do you speak to at a time that you have this message of your heart? How many can you speak to? And I went, well, 300 so proudly, you know. He goes, <laughs> exactly. He said, books multiply your ministry and you will reach far more people with this message that means so much to you of knowing not what the mirror says, not what culture tells us, not what our history demands, and not what our own insecurities would dictate, but who the God of the universe says we are based on the power and the truth of his word. That's what changed me, mm -hmm. and that I know is what changes everybody, men and women. So the two books, the first one is Beauty by the Book, but it's not a beauty book. <laughs> the subtitle is actually the key. It's seeing yourself as God sees you. And um, 
my best reviews have been from men who basically said, this is not a chick book. Oh, great. And um, the second book is called The Wonder of His Love, A Journey into the Heart of God. It's a 31-day devotional, and it's 31 very different aspects of God's love that we may not always recognize as his love for us to get to know him better and, and appropriate and understand and live in the freedom and the power of his love. And I'll be frank, I write what I need because uh, I'm selfish. <laughs> so I write books I need, and mm -hmm. I figure if I need it, yes, maybe Teresa could benefit. Yes, ma'am. Maybe Joni could benefit. Or mm -hmm. any, and I find it's very true. We're all, no matter what we do for a living, where we've come from, what we, how we live, where we are, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And we struggle with the same stuff, and we need the same affirmation from the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm sure you shared a lot of great insight in these books, and they sound very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Now, I did watch a, a previous interview you did on Daystar, and actually uh, the part that I saw was where a book of short inspirational stories helped reconnect you back to God during a difficult time. Would you mind sharing just a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, I grew up as a believer. I grew up as a Christian in Florida, wonderful family, wonderful home. Um, and then sadly, uh, departed from that. When I got off to college, I just, I didn't mean to leave the Lord, but as often happens, if you don't stay in fellowship and you don't kind of keep that connection with God little by little by little, I drifted away. Mm -hmm. 15 years I was in the desert. And I, but I had a hunger in my heart to come back. And what I, how I was coming back, though, was through the New Age movement. I was attracted oh. to the spiritual mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. But I thought, there has to be more. There has to be more. So I'm a voracious reader. I'm reading every kind of spiritual, Buddhist, Hindu, Rosicrucianism, theosophy. And one day on TV, I'm watching an ad for a book called Power for Living. It was a collection of testimonies. And as I said, oh, that's the kind of book I want. So I ordered it, and I'll tell, can I tell the story about how I read it? Uh, oh, where yes, I was? yes, okay. whatever you want to share. I was shooting, I had just been hired to shoot an episode of Magnum P.I. Okay. with Tom Selleck. Oh, well, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was great. Um, so I arrive in Hawaii. The day I f flew to Hawaii was the day I checked my mailbox, and this book, Power for a Living, had arrived. How funny. Put it in my backpack, head to Honolulu to discover somebody in Matlock production made a mistake. And they had brought me, I mean Magnum production, okay. they brought me in three days too early. That never happens in television. It mm -hmm. just, it's too expensive a mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to my little hotel room and I just sat there and read this book. And it was a collection of Christian testimonies by famous people. And I was overwhelmed. It, it brought me to my knees, I burst into tears, and I felt the presence of the Lord enter that room and fall on me for three days I never left the room. And I had an encounter with the Lord that was life-changing, and I've never had anything that powerful ever since. And basically the Lord came to me and said, I know what you've done, I know your great need, I know how damaged you are, you just come to me. Mm -hmm. Don't you clean yourself up first. Don't try to get better and then decide you'll come to me. You come to me right now, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to wipe all that filth right off of your little face. And it radically changed me. And when I came back, it's funny, you'll appreciate this, after three days and I had to get off my knees and kind of go shoot the Magnum episode, and I, I always felt like, you know, I always wanted to work with Tom Selleck, but uh -huh. after three days, God was, you know, with God, Tom was quite anticlimactic <laughs> you know, after God. I, so I came back to L.A., and that changed everything. I prayed for work I could be proud of, that I wouldn't compromise in any way, and that God would lead me to a godly man, mm -hmm. which he did. Oh, that is awesome. So so right there should tell you how powerful books are. And yes, ma'am, yes. you, you may have some more books in you I that you I need do. to I've write. I think I do. I've been told by, <laughs> by the author of all things <laughs> that there are five. So I got, I got work to do. I got to get cracking. <laughs> It's powerful. I'm right now producing short story book, oh, working on that and getting things together for that. I think it'll be great and That's help a, a lot of people. That's a powerful format. The short mm -hmm. story, people's mm -hmm. stories are, are very powerful. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Now, I know you serve on many boards and you're very involved with helping women around the world. Please share a little about all of those charitable activities that you're uh -huh. doing. Um, well, we talked earlier about for those who've been given much, much is required and part of the joy, I think, for any of us who have had any modicum of of success in the world's eyes is that we now get to have a platform from which to speak, mm -hmm. which I know is why God gave it to us, mm -hmm. um, that can influence other people. So um, I do serve on a couple of industry-related boards. Um, the Greenhouse, which is fabulous. It's a, a group of us in Los Angeles who are really kind of helping train up, raise up the next generation of filmmakers. They do practical, classes, writing classes, producing, acting. Um, it's an exciting, so any of you that have a child or have somebody or you yourself have an interest in pursuit, God, you feel like God is calling you to the industry and LA is the place, <laughs> check out Greenhouse Arts and Media because um, it's all run by believers, so the classes are safe and it's really, it, it guides you spiritually in your maturity but also to grow in your craft and the Biola University Studio Task Force and Dove Channel um, Advisory Board. But one of my other great heartbeats is Sat7, which is Christian uh, television that broadcasts throughout the Middle East, North Africa, all of Europe, and it broadcasts into the Muslim world. Awesome. And it's for Christians created by believers, for believers, produced and presented by believers who live in the region. So it's all indigenous programming created by people who live there and it's culturally accurate, biblically accurate, and people who are speaking to their own communities. And it is having an amazing impact. Um, I, I love Israel and I have gone there many times and even produced, uh, got to do a travel show to attract the evangelical world to, to for tourism for Israel. Mm -hmm. I was brought there by the tourist D division, Ministry of Tourism for the state of Israel. I am I know God's plans and purposes for that land and those people. But my paradigm also got totally cracked open when I realized how many brothers and sisters we have who are living very persecuted, very marginalized mm -hmm. as believers, holding on and occupying that land in the Muslim world, in, the, in, the per, in Persia, Iran, and all throughout North Africa. And so our goal with SAT-7 is just to simply give them encouragement and teaching and training. There's women's programming on the network. And, and as a result, I've, I've got such a heart for women that um, we created SAT-7 Women for Middle East Hope which is to help galvanize us gals in the West especially to realize we need to pray for, how can we serve and, and um, undergird our sisters who are really marginalized over there and help them realize their value and worth in Christ and mm -hmm. how we can come alongside them with more women's programming and more understanding of who Jesus says they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of it. Oh, well, yes, you should be. That is such a great witness of the Lord around the world. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just so glad to be hearing all of this, oh, Nancy, and your Teresa. heart, your generous heart for people, and you're wanting to help people, mm. uh, along with what God has called you to do in your career. So thank you. In behalf of the kingdom of God, I want to say thank, thank you. you for thank what you're you. doing for everyone. Thank, thank you so you, much. That's God very bless sweet you. And kind. Well, now, Nancy. We've just been discussing um, this very blessed and successful life that you are experiencing and you're living your best life. But I know life <laughs> and there are challenges and there are dark moments and dark places. So what is your source of strength, your source of strength that you go to that keeps you going when those times come? Uh, my time with the Lord and the Word. That's always the go-to place. Um, it's funny, no matter what we have to face, whether we have personal heartache or career challenges or unexpected things, it's the reality that the intimacy and the closeness of the Lord is available to us at every single moment, at the mountaintops as well as the valleys. My husband, in fact, this is the first time I've spoken of it publicly, but um, <clears throat> my husband almost died mm -hmm. about eight months ago. He went into septic shock oh, in a matter of hours and he was really literally pronounced a dead man. But I got to witness 
the power of the Lord and the power of community and the church galvanized and coming together through prayer as texts flew out mm -hmm. and uh, and people were not just saying, oh, I'll pray for you. Right. They went to prayer. Mm -hmm. And we saw things shift. And out, after 12 days, he was out of ICU. Wow. He spent another 10 days in the hospital and then rehab. And he is here with me at this event and doing incredibly well. But one of the key verses in scriptures for me during that whole time was um, basically be strong and courageous. I will fight this fight for you. It's what he spoke to Moses, what he spoke to Joshua, and I think what he speaks to all of us every day, whatever it is we are faced with, we just have to remember that God is there to fight our battles. Our job is to stay in touch with him, stay as intimate as we can with him. Because during that time, there's no explanation for how I um, handled it. Mm -hmm. Except I was, except for the Lord, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was I was upset, but I was strong. I was clear. Um, he, I, I, I don't know. There's no other explanation except that the Lord was with me, and He is with you. He's with all of us, no matter what we go through. Right. He was supernaturally getting you through yes, it. Yes, He was adding His super to your natural. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> and really His right. extra to your ordinary. That's extraordinary. so good. You're <laughs> yeah, so right. So well, that is beautiful, Nancy, beautiful. Well, um, I just want to do one more thing. Um, I want you to look at your ca the camera when you answer this. Um, fill in the blank. Mm. Nancy Stafford is? A cherished, beloved child of God, which I would have had a hard time saying a number of years ago. Thank you so much, Nancy, mm. for being with Thank us. You, I hope this is not the last time. I will, I will just Me have too. some more time well, with let's you. Let's just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Thank you so much. Thanks, I know you're Teresa. very, very busy, and we're here at the Global Media Summit. Yes, we are. We're celebrating the film screening of First Lady, and I'm I'm so delighted that you are a part of it, Thank and I'm you. really looking forward to seeing it. And we'll Thank be sharing you. more with the viewers on the red carpet later yes, on, too. Yes, we will, and we'll be filling you in on where you can see this wonderful film as it yes. rolls out. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. All right, God bless you. Bless you. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the screening of First Lady. What aha moment did you have watching this film? Oh my goodness, from the very beginning, it was just right on. It was spot on. Every moment of watching it, it was amazing. It just kept taking us to a different level. Very well put together, extremely well put together. I loved every minute of it from beginning to end. Did you appreciate the humor in it? I laughed. But what was so strange is from the very beginning, and I won't give it away, but just from the very beginning, it brought you in, and you were just, but then all of a sudden you're laughing. So it was just an emotional roller coaster, but it was great. Every moment of it was fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your comments about the film. Thank you. Okay, um, I really enjoyed the film. Um, what I liked about it was the subject matter, actually, the first lady. Um, I think sometimes it's a bit under, the first lady can be a bit underrated and so on, but it's a very important role. It really does help to win elections, you know, if you have a very likable first lady. So I found that that was quite interesting. As, and, and I think what I've seen from the film as well is that uh, because the character, she loved people. Um, and, you know, when you look at the reality of first ladies and so on, I think that's just, just really important when they love people. They're not just all into themselves, but they are into, you know, very valuable causes and things like that. I was so excited to be here for the screening because you know what I saw? I saw a film that was inspiring, it was fun, it'll make you cry. So just the full emotions, but it was something the whole family can go to, and that's beautiful. Absolutely. Are you going to tell your friends to come see the film? You bet. <laughs> you bet I am. I will share with everyone and post on it on all the social media that I have too, so it's fun. You don't want to miss this movie for everyone. You have to watch it. But I'll tell you something that I really love. I love the fact that we're talking about the White House, but the movie itself is hilarious. So the, the great thing is, you know, there's so much laughter 
and it's all about the White House. So it kind of puts the light the White House in a lighter, you know, in a lighter mode, and I love that. I really do. It was a great movie. Time. I really enjoyed it. It was such a unique storyline that, that engaged me until the very end. It was just wonderful. I, in, I encourage everyone to see it. I think everyone should see this film. I loved how it was. It would be a film that I would see with my family. It was wholesome. It was funny. It was serious. It had everything for the whole family. I thought it was really good. She did a great job. Oh, it was amazing and so professional. I've known them all so many years as being a first member with CMA, the most amazing group. And they did amazing. I was, felt like I was behind the White House doors and I was having an amazing dinner. And the royal part of it, he played that part so well, being from England. And uh, that's my life too. <laughs> so I think it was just superb, so professional. And I'm waiting for the next movie. I love the story that that kind of this secret romance thing and then you know like because when you lose your husband and then to have a, an old love come back I mean I just loved it I thought it was a very sweet story while still being very uh, modern in that we have this woman who's a very strong woman um, taking care of the Oval Office for a while as she hands it over to the next person basically you know and helps her old husband and you know ex-husband so anyway I loved it well I'm a sucker for a chick flick so it was great it was funny it you know had that charm and that those special romantic moments it was really cute so did a great job well that's wonderful what uh, what was your favorite part without giving anything away <laughs> without giving anything away you know I think when the first lady and the king had that special moment on the couch that I'm, I don't want to give up too much, but <laughs> but um, it was just really authentic and sweet, so I really like that. Wow, what a great time we've had tonight celebrating the screening of First Lady. Be sure to be watching for it. Find it on your social media sites and look for it in a theater near you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the Time with Teresa television show. For guest and sponsorship opportunities, contact Teresa today.